from all, and the referee should have sort of got hold of that earlier as well. But their tactics, yeah, they did it. But you're right, you've seen that before where they, they've allowed Leeds to come almost to halfway, sit in, and then just hope to, to catch them. And it, and it has worked to an extent, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we watched the game together, didn't we, Raggy? And yeah. It was very obvious out of possession that that's all all, all, all planned on doing, sitting back in and then using Camille Grzycki and, and Bowen as their yeah. out ball whenever mm. they got the chance. And again, going back to, I know we, we're going over all ground here, but the first goal for me is a mistake. Phillips puts his foot. It, it's not a goal essentially the second one is Douglas should do a little bit better really Bailey Peacock Farrell makes a great save in mm. the in the in the build up to it then drop into Jared Boyne's feet who, on the runner form he's on by the sounds of it Spurs bound he was always going to score weren't he to be honest they were just clinical on the day Yeah, they just took their chances and we didn't um, well when I say that we didn't make a huge amount of clear cut chances in the whole game I don't think um, but we didn't take any of them, and that and that was and like I say, that was that mm. was the difference in the in the game. I think we talked about it and said I think we could have been there while ten o'clock. We wouldn't have scored. Yeah, the two chances we had cleared off the line. I think Marshall makes a good save from Roof's header towards mm. end of game. You know, it would just had the feel of one of them games that we could be there yeah. forever, and we probably weren't going to score. I think mm. isn't this the thing that he's he's pointing out there now? I mean, he's not. He is <laughs> he is definitely not happy about getting out of the cup. You can you can tell that, and obviously it's a third defeat, but. He's right. If he if he's pointing, to, and he's he, he not going to argue with his maths. If he's saying that Leeds are acting like a bottom five championship side of the amount of chances they need to create to score, rather than the the top end where they need say three chances, then you've got to keep creating chances just to give yourself a chance of scoring because yeah. you're just not efficient enough. And then if the back end isn't doing its job, which clearly it isn't when it comes to set pieces, then you've got not a toxic mix at the top of the table, but you've got a very difficult mix and it needs resolving. And I'm hoping Friday night that, you know, if Cooper's back after 65 minutes, what, last night against Hull Reserves, then, um, and Janssen, who's back training, we were told, weren't we, on, on Monday, so yeah. that suddenly that problem gets solved. Yeah. I mean, I want to just come on to Pontus Janssen a little bit. I have been a bit critical of him. Um, on this show a few times particularly about his attitude sometimes I felt a few times last year we saw him go down with injuries and mm -hmm. I questioned is he really injured or does he just not fancy it but I think the last few games obviously granted we've had defeats I think he's looked at exactly every bit of the player that we signed when we first got him and he came through on loan and he was you know, he just looked a step above it, everybody in this league, and I think we're back to that Pontus. Yeah, I think he's been brilliant recently. And and I think that putting Cooper back alongside him shouldn't be underestimated because I think Liam Cooper's been top class as well mm -hmm. this season, to be honest. Yeah. Um, just nipping over onto Facebook then. I a think few even if sorry, man, if Cooper's not hundred percent, you we've got to play him on on Friday. Mm. I I think you've got to run with that risk. Do you? Mm. Yeah. Because that is a. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, who, who go goes inside of him, Halm? Yeah. I, I, although I agree with you in one respect, I also want to try and look at it as a bigger entity, and I fear that if we bring him back in and he has a reoccurrence of, is it mm. an, essentially, he's had knee surgery yeah. in the day, mm. and we have a, a reoccurrence, we could then lose him for another, yeah, that, another that's month, the thing you don't want another do. two month, and then we start yeah. creeping then towards like the the mm. serious business end of the season. Um, so I agree. I'd love to see Fit Cooper outside of. Pontus Janssen as opposed to anybody else but then I also agree that we probably need to make sure he's ready before he actually comes back mm. would you agree with that? I, I do because yeah. well I think that's the way he'll do it anyway if there's any doubt even if the player says he's ready then he, he won't no, he won't play him I don't think yeah. Um, and then yeah and then for me I'd love to see I, I do like oh look there's no Phillips is there for the next two games because there's a suspension so I could only see there being a harm eh? I don't I don't imagine there'd be Tom Pierce playing there or Leif Davis playing there or anything like that mm. I think it, it, it'd have to go that way but yep yeah, hope, hopefully he'll be back but the 65 minutes is good he didn't come off injured yeah. or anything he put it on ice didn't he straight yeah, he away did, yeah. so but um, no that is encouraging and I know we saw him briefly last week and I think he was hoping that the Derby game was was very realistic for him. To be oh, fair, good. did he t did he think he'd take Halme off at half time against QPR because he was booked in the first half and he was thinking about Friday and thinking all he needs to pick up is a silly another yellow and he's going to be suspended for Friday. Well, he said it was ta we did ask him. He mm. said it was tactical. So whether whether he meant that, is yeah, because that of, as opposed to injury, in he was asked tactical or injury, and he said it was tactical. So you could argue it could be that, couldn't you? So mm. um, just to protect him, yeah. Uh, just a quick nip onto Facebook because there's a few questions coming in in Pope here. One from John Precious, um, former guest of the show. Yeah. Um, Pope is a legend. Does he, have alter does he have to alternate which side Noel sits on so that he loses his ear in equal ear when Noel gives it a full no, blow and get in? There's a strict feng shui about it. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, Gantry, Ellen Road. Um, so we're down towards the scratchy shed end 
almost level with the penalty area so we haven't got the best view down towards the cop end but uh, so it's me on the left Noel in the middle and then presenter which can be Johnny or, or Catherine um, or Ronan or, or whoever uh, on the right and that is how it has to be we are and we try and replicate it at away games as well so my right ear gets it well you're on headphones and yeah, yeah. but uh, the right ear gets it more than uh, than the left I suppose I'll be honest yeah. uh, I think when the winner went in at Villa and I listened back to Noel <laughs> I do honestly think loads of dogs in East Midlands were like what's that noise because yeah. he went to a, a different level of, uh, yeah, yeah, of octave yeah. at times <laughs> yeah we, we've sort of learn to to cope with it it's not um <laughs> yeah it's not standard is it but yeah <laughs> but, hey, fans love it yeah it's exactly great. yeah that's great uh so nip over uh, a few bits about transfer window which we'll get onto a little bit dave bennett makes comment that we're all in t-shirts apart from young ben uh, normally paul could just put you in the in the picture yeah. uh, the air conditioning's been rattling out all day we come in at night and there's a polar bear sat in corner and it's freezing <laughs> so we're normally all sat here in courts woolly hats and that but this week we've uh, this radiator's on it's like i'm back in barbados yeah. <laughs> uh, he has to get it in every show <laughs> uh, Ke kevin illingworth brings up a good point uh, do you think coyle has been unlucky to be overtaken by shackleton <sighs> what i think is that he's but bales has obviously trusted Orta and the club to make the decision that Coyle isn't needed this season and so I don't think this sounds bad on Louis but I don't think he's wasted any time sort of saying right okay they're away that's not part of my plans um, and so I don't imagine he'll know too much about it so in that sense I think he's not even Bielsa's radar yeah. for me unlucky because I think he's, he's he could could still be a part of something here but as he said himself, he's 23 now, isn't he, Louis mm -hmm. Coyle? So second season at Fleetwood Effect, he was going to two full seasons now, isn't he, with his with his loan extended. So um, unlucky, I, I, th I think he's just unlucky by history, the way it's fallen from coaches coming in and what have you, because um, much as I wanted to see him get regular football, and I wish he was at Leeds, um, I think others are going to go past him. He's not going to go past Ailing clearly at the moment. And so Shackleton has benefited from that and with the Berardi injury, of course, too. Mm -hmm. So if Louis Cor was here, I'm sure he would be in the side right now, to be quite honest. Yeah, I think uh, Shackleton's probably jumped ahead there as well with the fact that he's flexible, isn't he? His, his yeah. natural position yeah. is supposedly the central, central midfield. So, mm -hmm. you know, as we've seen with Dallas a little bit this year, you've got a, a player who can play a few positions as opposed to where Louis Coyle probably is a right-back, right, -back, right winger yeah. at a push where he has played for Fleetwood a few times this year um, <clears throat> so you know that might be part of the reason uh, Nippy back over uh, Paul Williams Popey happy Christmas after hey, the hey. Villa game <laughs> best commentary ever oh so that's, that's nice to know yeah nice thank to know. you um, Mark Jones I listen to Popey and Noel every game the best comedy radio ever is that a veiled compliment <laughs> <or>? <laughs> oh, yeah yeah <laughs> to be fair mate that's yeah. better than some of the stuff we get said on here <laughs> um, no, we... <laughs> yeah he's, he's fun he's fun Dean Senior, is an option to bring Wilkes back in January? I doubt it now, they've just extended his yeah, line. Yeah, extended, haven't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, and getting rave reviews again, I think the last game yeah. too, didn't he? So uh, there was a lot of assists, they won five, didn't they, Donny? So I think he had. Uh, I think he played particularly well in that, and he's, he's obviously, I think last time I can't, he got eight, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so, no, so that's not happening this season, um, and we don't know what the future, he has signed a new deal, but obviously we have to wait and see with regards off the pitch developments for him too uh, in the summertime, but he signed a new deal Leeds obviously see there's something there for him but um, yeah Doncaster benefited him big time but no he's not coming back now is he so yeah. then there were a clip they went through quite a few well went past quite a few players over the Christmas period mm. yeah I saw that yeah. went back mm. and did another few after he went <laughs> past them all went back and did them again <laughs> yeah um, Adrian Hockey thoughts on Clark staying put in the transfer window fingers crossed emoji Got to mention that. I don't think it's That's what happens if my Alexa reads anything out. Fingers crossed emoji. <laughs> poo, poo, poo emoji. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, are, we, are we worried about um, potentially our newest, greatest starlet in Jack Clark going? No. I can't Talk into that, that one, Ben, because that one's not working. Right. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. mate. So, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. No, I, I don't. He's already, he already turned down City allegedly in summer, didn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, apparently this story goes history has it that... He's already turned down City before. He's getting the playing time. He's under a great manager. So for me, there's no real reason for him to go anywhere. I no. think he's benefiting from being this impact sub that he's been. He's got the start against QPR, did well. But for me, we're most effective in the first half, and that's when they were fresh. Do you know? So keep doing what he's doing. And for me, the impact sub that he is at the moment 
will allow, allow him to develop into the role that we want him to be as this class winger that we know we've got. Mm, definitely. I mean, what's your thoughts, Poppy, on uh, Jack Clark? In your time covering Leeds United, we've seen the emergence of Fabian Delft and, and people like that. I mean, where do you rank Jack Clark in that? Sort of probably the rank. best probably the best because he's the most exciting he reminds me of two players I really admire Trevor Stephen and Mick Arteta because he just goes past people without looking like he's fast but he is <laughs> and he's so clever and so intelligent and not afraid just to play you know a sensible ball as well if needs be and we've seen bits of the defensive side that he needs to do because QPR kept him at bay for quite a while actually I think he worked hard so for me I think he's I know it's early because we've got 12 games in aren't we with him but potentially, I think certainly he's, he's one of the best talents. And you're thinking Lewis Cook, you know, you're thinking, you know, Fabian Delph, but, and I know different positions, but I think he's sensational. I really do. I think I love watching him. And, uh, you know, the 23s, mate, he's worth watching on his own when he's been there now. He's, and he, it's weird, isn't it? Because until Saturday, he hadn't, he was the first new starter, wasn't he? I know Leif Davis was there, if you like, because of the injury to Douglas at, at Villa, wasn't he? He'd already got his start, but. But he was the most experienced, if you think about yeah, the young yeah. lads, really. So, um, just great. And and I think he's playing it right, Bielsa. I think he is playing it in, in the sense that he's bringing him in. He actually referred to it. He said, look, Jack Clark started. You could tell maybe that the whole game, he wasn't quite at the standard that he could have been or, or has been. But there were signs there that he could be. And I think, I think I don't have any fears at this stage of him going. Now, my worry was at one point was Tom Pearce before he got injured. I know there's been a lot of interest in Tom, particularly after getting the, the England honours and having a good back end of last season when he was in the side on the heck and bottom. He's been out injured. Yes, he's come back now. But my, that was my fear, was that, that he could be prone to, to a bid. So. I don't think now Tom Pearce is third choice left back. Well, what would what, what we do Friday night? You know, if Douglas isn't ready, Douglas I'd play and I'd, me. I think I'd I'd go with Davis. Would you? Mm-hmm. Controversial. I see. I'd put Tom Pearson because he's that. You, more but you don't like Tom Pearson. That's why you'd go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Because I think, I think Leif Davis is better. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, we had it earlier in the season, didn't we? When Douglas first went injured, and he was then he played Dallas there, yeah. and I, and I think Pearce was fit at that stage. Um, yeah. Maybe he wasn't 100%, I don't know, but it was before he was actually announced he was injured. And at that point, I thought, well, you know, where does he lie within the pecking order? He doesn't seem to be really pushing for the fir- first team positions in favour, it, 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 in my opinion. But, but you, I mean, you can't read into being subbed on, subbed off either. The oh, no, I don't, can I don't. You? But he's back in the squad, he was back, like the boot. he's been in one of those big protected boots yeah, for ages lights, yeah. which on, don't we? and that's yeah. been quite a while you know mm. so I think it's it's probably and we sort of almost forgot about him really with all the other injuries that had gone on because he wasn't part of the, the first team setup. he was yeah. barely making the bench at times wasn't he so I like him I think he's I think he's a very very good player and if he can recover that form then then they're going to be really strong there and you know and, and the alarming thing is seeing Douglas lose that form I mm. know he's, he's had problems lately with injury or sickness whatever but um, that's you know, we need someone to step up really Oh, yeah. sorry. We discussed the Douglas thing just before we came on air. That he, he seemed to, maybe just a little bit before Christmas. I, I think I said it on the uh, podcast after Hull. He like it running round with like lead in his boots. He just looked really sort of sluggish in a way. But if you think about it, he came in pretty much close to the end, the beginning of the season. And when the rest of this team's done two months under Bielsa training, and he's been at Wolves, maybe been, you might be playing, you might not, and not done that sort of regime that the rest of the team done and it's ca- it's catching up with him now yeah with I mean, a little muscle injury and sort of stuff like that I as mean, well the left back position has notoriously been terrible for Leeds mm. we have seen some bad players in left back haven't we let's be honest I'm not going to name them because it would be unfair but we have seen some pretty poor left backs and then we've seen players being asked to play that role so famously Andy, Andy Hughes played left back for mm. a long period of time in the promotion winning season and uh, I'll be honest, when we first signed Douglas in the beginning of the season, it, I think it told an absolute country mile that he was a natural left-back and suddenly we looked like we'd got some balance to the defence. But I, I don't know what you think, Poppy. I still, minus Sheffield Wednesday, which I know is a random uh, match to put, I still don't think we've seen the very best to Barry Douglas. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Probably right, yeah. I think um, I agree with you. I think potentially he's he's been the best or be the best left back they've had for a long time there um, not the quickest to say mm. and, and I know defensively he's been cut out lately but going forward he sees passes 
better than most and he drills it into feet and I like that and he sees it quickly and he does support obviously Alioski really well so but I think yeah I think there's more to come I thought he started off brilliantly though I thought it, yeah. but then as you say it was a, it has been at times a low bar and the Pierce finished really well last season but prior to that it has been you know a bit of a bit of a difficult position <laughs> yeah. and you're right Just and you go back yeah, you think of Bassoni and you think of you know they had to switch Pelletier in there for a while yeah. he's not really left but you're right it has been I mean that's going back a long time isn't it it has been a real issue for them but now this has been blessed with three very very capable ones um, yeah. in, in, if you include in Davis who, who does look like he could be really really good I get the feeling with Barry Douglas because I am a big fan a massive fan yeah. uh, I get the feeling that if he gets through a solid 90 minutes that'll push him on build his confidence and then we'll see the better Barry Douglas as it goes on and I just think that again I agree uh, similar with Jack Harrison and people like that which I know he divides opinion massively Jack Harrison but again I think we've seen a dip in form and we've not really had time to sort of pick that back up again and it's kind of running away with a I couple of I think he's done Jack Harrison has sort of done alright I mean Villa were a bit of a bad game for him but apart from that I think he's he's done alright the irony of the Forest game was he probably had his best game for yeah. ages and got yeah. hooked at I half absolutely going to say mm. that yeah. what, do, what do you think Pope I mean with Jack Harrison yeah it, it can <clears> be frustrating <throat> at times it, it can Um and look, he's not number nine, clearly, in the, no. the QPR thing. I think that was, although I thought he did his best to switch with Roberts, you know, and take that load between him in the first half. But yeah, I mean, that 45 minutes against Preston where he was devastating. And um, I think sometimes he seems to be the victim of the sort of how he's, he's sort of almost like his gait, really. He looks like he's looking down, he's got a low centre of gravity, and looks like he's running into legs a little bit. I always try and measure it in terms of like, all right, what balls have gone in that could, you could reasonably expect you know, centre forward to put away and I know Leeds don't play with a big number nine as such and that's where it's difficult for me I don't see too much provision there whereas Alioski even though we can argue the toss against him loads the stats have shown or certainly up till Christmas that he was the most um, productive player in creating chances in open play in the mm. championship you know so um, and that's you know that going on the opted stats now whatever you think of those chances that's that's incredible really and I just don't see that from Harrison Mm. There's a player there, isn't there? Mm. But I know it's people because of the three defeats and they're saying he started. People are like, oh, sending back and send Baker back and all that. that. That I can't see that happening. Bielsa really sort of rates these two, doesn't he, as part of his squad going forward? And I can't see him wanting to jet some players. Yeah, um, it's not really his way, is it? Not really. No, he's he's looked at it and, and 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 for me, Harrison, he's got he's got real ability. Something you know, in there, so, yeah, in there, there is yeah. for me. Yeah. So persevere. Yes, but I do like Jack Clark starting. Yeah. Uh, as well so I think he's turning the tide yeah definitely uh, nip back over onto Facebook because again there's a lot of questions coming in uh, Carl Cummings says Popey you need to create your own catchphrase now because Noel's got to get in <laughs> you need to have your own um, a few people commenting about Saiz we'll get into Saiz in a little bit um, a few other points here Michelle Vorm has been mentioned today we'll have a chat about him when we get onto the transfer bit um, do you think we're actually going to sign anybody this window that's a question from uh, Griff Chris Sign or loan, um, I think. I think he's probably meaning both. I think I would be really shocked if they didn't bring a keeper in. Um, I would be really shocked because I think, not least for the injury situation, you know, if Peacock was to get injured. Personally, I think he should prove that he's capable enough of uh, of keeping the shirt. You know, I know there's criticism of him even during the seven victories on the bounce, and he hasn't looked as confident as he has been at times. But I think just to get another keeper in is really important. And for me, if there was still Rob Green at the club, then that would be an ideal. But um, so there, they have to. Darlow, obviously, Benitez has said, look, he's not up for grabs, but Rob Elliott is. Um, look, things can change by the end of a window aren't they? So, do I see them spending multi-million pounds on players? I really don't see that happening. I um, think that shows really, well, from what it looks like on Twitter that um, they want four million for Darlow, and, and we not don't. To yeah, learn. we <laughs> yeah, and we don't really seem too keen on paying four million for him. No, and then, then you look elsewhere. You got like Westwood's playing again, isn't he? You know, Heaton's been involved again. Fraser Force has been mentioned, but then you're looking at huge wages, aren't you? I think, mm. and they're just. Yeah, you know, look, Leeds got to be an attractive proposition, haven't they? Players that aren't getting a, a look in. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Not in, in in the past when you've been halfway at the table and maybe threatening to go towards playoffs. It's not the same thing right now. What? A, Especially what a for a goalkeeper as well. I always remember yeah. signing Alex McCarthy when he was a young mm. lad. Can you remember getting McCarthy in? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was mm. it was it was outstanding when he was here, and he made all the sounds that he didn't want to go back. But we, I think, where was it at the time? 
Was it South? He went at Southampton then, was it? Alex McKenna. Reading. Yeah, was Reading. Reading. Yeah, Reading. Yeah. And we got him. We got him on loan when we had we went for a right glut of emergency mm. goalkeepers. I think we had Frank Fielding at one point as well as a an emergency goalkeeper. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be very surprised not to see a goalkeeper come in. But I think with the way Bielsa sees things, the goalkeeper would have to have very particular attributes that would fit yeah. into our style of playing. The biggest one being. Good with his distribution and good with his feet. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, confident with his feet as well. The marked difference between Bailey Peacock Farrell in the QPR game. A lot of times, so receiving ball ten yards out of his eighteen yard box as a sort of a third centre half, if you like, at, at certain times. Mm-hmm. Particularly when we were, when we were pushing the agenda a little bit, trying to get back in the game. So, yeah, I'd be uh, I'd be extremely surprised. But then again, we've talked about it many times on the show. There's names getting banded about. I mean, Michelle Vorm's been one mm-hmm. that apparently has been offered to the club, and we've turned him down because uh, we're, we're not interested for whatever reason that's fine um, but it's not kind of oh we'll go for X because he's good yeah he might be a good keeper but he might not have the, f- the foot yeah. attribute that Bielsa wants so suddenly we start narrowing that search down and it's it's not quite as easy as being made out we see names ping, getting pinged about regular. I mean Tammy Abraham's a prime example at Villa uh, somebody put out on Twitter the other day from a decent source his sort of weekly wages you know, we're talking about just go. He, he, if he was still at Chelsea now, he would be one of them names that Leeds fans would be saying. Just mm. go and get Tammy Abrams, and if he's on fifty-five grand a week plus an appearance fee plus a goal fee, you you could be talking up in upwards of hundred grand a week. Mm. You know, so it's not that simple as just going out and going. He's not playing. We'll have him. Is it? Is no, it, it, it isn't. And you can say Bielsa was probably the most open about the situation that's been left with Blackman and say he's not there. And Anders coming into definitely number ten now leaves a position on the wing open and so the lad at half an iron Zuba gets mentioned doesn't he mm. um, and I think the point you make Nego is, is true I think there's so much about Bielsa saying right I've got these lads alright some of them might not be firing all cylinders but they know exactly what I expect of them they've been right through the regime from you know July all the way through what's, what's going to happen when I bring in a guy that's not been playing yeah. and isn't maybe up to my standards at this point and hasn't lost quite enough kilos etc and then yeah, you could be looking at another month before they're yeah. ready. So, as you said, you've got to be really, really good to come in and, and make a difference straight away. But right now, if you're, who's not, who's not going to look at Leeds and go, right? Gosh, I could be a legend here. I could go there and make an absolute difference. We are halfway through getting to the Premier League. This is, and to know what that would mean to the club and your, your own career yeah. if you're only there to the end of the season. Like, what is not to love? So, yeah. Um, it's the best so or much as a difficult window Leeds are the best place to go and go and buy mm. and do some action in it because of where they are on the table yeah there's been I mean we talked about it just before I came on air and you was unaware of it but um, a little le- a little article's come out today about um, potentially Chelsea calling back Lewis Baker which is seems a bit left field well the, the only if that was to ha- I've not heard that I've not heard any you know we're going to do the press conference tomorrow so let's see what uh, what's said but that would be A another position that would be light if he did why would Chelsea do that obviously he's not going to play there so would they think well he's not getting enough game time at Leeds do we send him out somewhere else mm. and that's the only thing I could think of yeah um, we, I think we all agreed with that didn't mm. we before and that it could only be that I can't see Leeds depleting the squad any that, more than we already are have got someone coming in you know, well yeah so. and it frees up <clears throat> wages potentially yeah. but yeah we'd need somebody to come in because we're so light as it is yeah I mean it's I mean Look, he does use them reasonably regularly. He's, there, he's in the 18, isn't mm. he? Not so, yeah, he's not... Uh, and then you got to remember how many people he jettisoned when he did come in. Never mind the players that aren't loan. That third pile of players that he said, right, I don't want anything to do with these. Go out alone, <laughs> get rid of them. And what, you know, obviously Baker was coming in the other way. He obviously thought, no, right, this, this guy can do something. So, yeah, I... I'd, I'd be surprised unless it is that they want more game time for it. and they do watch the guy, when the guys come on loan and I was speaking to Jack Housen about this they are watched closely by their host clubs you mm. know, there's people they're in touch all the time so you know I think I saw something today Arsenal have put the first ever dedicated loan sort of head coach if you like basically mm. a coach whose sole purpose is to monitor loan players who are playing away from the clubs and sort of assist them. Chelsea will need a whole team. Yeah, exactly. 39 loans have got out somewhere. I think Jack Harrison mentioned it, didn't he, in an interview he did. And it might have been with you, Pope. Yeah, actually, I think, previously yeah he, talked to, he, he talked said that he'd had a lot of support yeah, from absolutely. the Man City side of things as well. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> Mark Jones says, does Pope feel star- starstruck sat next to Chris Miles? 
think that's a dig oh, at you, yeah. Raggy. Here we go. Jim. The Chris Miles <laughs> things is back. Um, one, uh, one name I have. It's heard, Pink Christmas. <laughs> just, to, just to chuck out here is uh, Sheridan Bookholder. Bookholder. Yes. Bookholder. Uh, Twenty-two-year-old Algerian left winger. Now, the, it was a name that was. Just... I thought you just like made that up. No, no. So I checked it on Football Manager. <laughs> it's no absolutely L- legit, no legit. But the interesting bit comes with this because let's be honest, you could chuck any name at anybody in the January transfer window and make a splurious link out of it. Um, I brought that word back just to annoy that person who would not like to say it. Because uh, like me and Ben jokingly mentioned Johnny Housen on a previous podcast for a previous podcast we used to do and the day after it was linked in the press that Johnny House was coming back to Leeds so it doesn't take a lot to get a bit of traction but the interesting one about this kid Bukolder Bukolder yeah he's at Lille at the moment he was signed for Lille by uh, Marcello Bielsa okay. uh, and he was previously at Marseille who was also signed for at Marseille by Marcello Bielsa left winger fits the profile not getting no game time at, um, at Lille so again you start looking at that as a, a maybe potential I'm not sure look they need somebody in to add to, to that on either side of the pitch because he likes to switch them over doesn't he but saying that Alioski for me has probably had his three or four better games or best yeah. games mm-hmm. in a row for a while and uh, not often that we've, we've been able to say that because I'm normally <laughs> banging a table when, when I'm watching him but but, um, but yeah so since Saez has gone as well mm, yeah Ooh, controversial right no. well, just, just checking it out just, yeah just, just checking it out yeah. right okay could we also say that because Saez has gone, Phillips got sent off? Is that what, are, we, are we having any <laughs> no. other links to the Saez departure? That would probably because Farshad didn't tackle someone. Oh, <laughs> no, stop. Stop now, <laughs> nipping this in the bud. Anyway, back over on Facebook. Uh, does Popey think Bielsa has a stubbornness about him with regards to signings? I think uh, I think it manifests itself in, in a loyalty to the squad that he's... But don't forget, he's, he looked at everything before he came, didn't he? 23 is not just the, f- the first one but he obviously thought right we can do this mm. building my uh, criteria of, as you say four injuries a week if you're off per match day and, and I can still do this I've seen enough potential in these young guys so I think stubborn or confident in his in his belief that he's got the, the t- he keeps saying it we've got the tools to see this through so provided that some of the injured players do come back otherwise they, they clearly haven't so there is a stubbornness but I think it's more a, a real belief that now we've got the resources to do it we probably all disagree and that they need more um not just because of the injury front but just form and if, look we're all expecting maybe that there would be a bit of burnout come february march time um so but he's um he's probably an owner's dream in that sense isn't he i would say oh yeah you know, <laughs> so, have yeah, yeah he, 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 he is so but I get, I get, having got to know him and, and hear him talk and, and what have you, you, you sort of think, no, I, I understand why you're doing this and, and, and why you think this works. Tight, tight squad. Creates a team spirit which we've not seen. We saw it in spells under Monk probably, mm. um, but not like this for such a sustained period and such an effective period as well and a style of play. And he, I think you can only get your way of thinking and your philosophy across to a small group so quickly I think if he had a large group of players it would have been much much more difficult to have handled early on and uh, he's uh, he's done it his his criteria seems to work and you know we can't really fault him at this stage can you no, you know, no. You can't, you know. I, I mean we, we've talked about it loads of times on this show <clears throat> whichever way this season goes this season will go down in history one way or another just for Marcello Bielsa being here just mm. the way he is in in his press conferences, the way yeah. that he's very obviously, not just him solely, obviously his team around him as well, have changed the entire dynamic of the club. Because yeah. essentially the team that turns out most Saturdays is essentially the same team that was here last year, yeah. minus Mateus Click, who was away at Utrecht, minus your Barry Douglas, yeah. but everyone else was here. And he's, he's getting a tune out of some players that we didn't know he could get a tune out, like right. you said earlier yeah. on. And he did it so fast. Yeah, he so did quick, it, He yeah. did it instantly. But we, he, thought it, he thought that was a long time, didn't he? He yeah. said seven weeks is a long time in football. We're thinking, it's been really <laughs> all over the summer. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's phenomenal. I um, mean, I mean, what is it like to go and interview? J- well, you see, as a bloke, mm. like I'd say if I was sat down with him on my own, I think I'd just really like him because I think he's, um, obviously he's humble. Uh, I mean, super intelligent and patient as well because he gets asked you know a lot of the same stuff I mean not necessarily by us local we're trying to move it on a bit now we discussed <laughs> that didn't we it's a bit like the beginning of the season there was like certain questions like when he, when everyone talks about the blue bucket yeah, for the yeah. first few weeks everyone's, and he's, you could just start seeing his face like why are they asking right. me about yeah, the bucket and, and he's really patient with it to yeah. be fair. 
it, it's difficult because you can't sort of you know if we're talking and then you'll you might say something you can come straight back and, and think oh really you can't do that when there's a translator you've got to yeah. ask hear it ask again and it's and you're wary that there's only so much time because everything takes about four times longer to be honest <laughs> isn't it so so you try and ask a few questions that you think well i definitely need to know that that and that and then let someone else have a go so it the dynamics change totally it's but it's really enjoyable. The pre one, like tomorrow's, they're the best ones because he just talks about anything. You can literally throw anything at him, and uh, yeah, he's. Um, he's Do you ask him if he listens to Talking Shut? <laughs> ask him. Yeah, he's. You know what? He's 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 on a different level. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that. Can't yeah, you? the just... way he's, he's immersed in the game, but the way he gets his point across, and um, and the way that he just looks as so I think he looks as just as a servant of the game, really, and uh, and I think that's uh, that's great and. Nothing is about false modesty. Nothing is untrue with him. You know the way he talks about fans and the, and the badge and the shirt and all that. Totally means it. You know, he's, mm. it comes from a, it seems to be like real sort of socialist angle that this is really important to lots of people, and I'm sure that's why partly why I took the job on. They think, wow, this is going to make a difference. This if, if I get this right. I, I also think he. I also think he uses. Uh Mr. Lamrani very cleverly as well because there was a there's a I don't know if you caught it there was a bit on Sky Sports where he told him something obviously in Spanish and as he translated it he didn't translate it exactly and he picked him up for yeah. it and I think Prutton mentioned it in studio and went oh it appears that his English is actually a little bit better than he's it letting is. on I yeah. it. we walked out the press conference uh, the other day at uh, QPR Can I just, before and he, and he, and did, he did he say, say something it. about chicken what in the <laughs> what, I'm in, sure in, as we were walking out mind, Ben's been drinking watching, all of January yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a fair one. <laughs> I was watching it and I'm sure he said pollo which is chicken pollo is chicken yeah and he said, I'm sure he was saying, because <laughs> someone, so, <laughs> someone asked him a question yeah. as he was sort of leaving. It was like a joke thing. And I'm sure he said, no chicken for you. Really? Oh, I don't know. He, look, Might not I, done, but speak, I can speak pissed? English. <laughs> <laughs> Less wine yeah, for you. That. My but, Spanish is great. <laughs> but I can hear him talking English to some of the staff. Yeah. And, and it's not bad at all. And, uh, Does he have a Yorkshire accent yet? He's, um, how do you describe <laughs> it? Um, yeah. I don't know. He's just just so quiet, isn't he? So you, yeah. you know you want to hear him, don't you? But I tell you what, the amount of selfies that people want to take with him incredible. I mean, by the time he got down the stairs at QPR, two flight, he must have. I saw him have three, and he's trying to get into the tunnel to hit, you know, to talk to the staff about injuries and, and players and stuff. But yeah, he's um, yeah. I don't think he gets the fuss, does he? But but he's so patient, and yeah. I, I do admire that in him because for a man that's totally obsessed by the game and. Uh, and, and making things better, that he still has time to do the the human stuff. Yeah. I've just, just got a wry smile there. Um, last night, obviously, the under-23s played it all. <coughs> I was flicking through our um, our Twitter feed, the Talking Shut Twitter feed, and literally within two thumb swipes, there was at least three selfies of <laughs> Afam with Marcello Bielsa. Yeah. So I jokingly tweeted out saying, does anybody know if Bielsa was at the under-23s match last night? And then I was inundated with people going, yeah, yeah, he was there, yeah, yeah. And I thought, sarcasm's lost on Twitter a fair bit, to be honest. But anyway, while we're on about Twitter and a slightly different tangent, I've been caught out with the fillet uh, curse today. What's that? Uh, somebody's retweeted a tweet from me in 2014 uh, after the signing of Jimmy Kebby <laughs> saying, and I quote, at Phil here, YEP, now that's a signing. Uh, it was at quarter past four <laughs> in 2014, so that's me get out. And to be fair, I did think Jimmy Kebby were a bit of a signing, but... Uh, I think we all did at the time, but... Uh, Until they started playing. Yeah. Until, yeah, oh, so, man, I'll Jesus. never forget, because him and Cameron Stewart came together, didn't they? Yeah. And Sheffield Wednesday was the day we that's lost right, it. Yeah. And uh, in what turned out to be an awful month, which should have been so good. And i never forget interviewing Cameron Stewart... <laughs> And, he's, and I said, well, you know... Were you still doing stepovers when you interviewed <laughs> him? Oh, honestly, I, I, so I said, I said, look, you and Jimmy Kebby have arrived. You're going to be on the team sheet against Sheffield and said, yeah, he said, there'll be a few uh, few opponents a bit worried now seeing me and Jimmy Kebby on that team sheet. Come <laughs> <start."> <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Here we go. Things so not to say. And Cameron right. Stewart, yeah. Mind you, got them about 450 grand, didn't it? Well, yeah, so, yeah, there is so, that. But, but yeah, there's uh, this... Yeah, yeah, they were... Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it was awful, it? Have you um, Have you ever had any... I don't want you to name names, but on. car crash interviews of people who are just a nightmare to interview? Um, I remember when yeah, did yeah. Monk get shared to you once yeah, about uh, identity? Yeah, and yeah, after, after Huddersfield? Yeah, it was yeah, after yeah. the Huddersfield game at Ellen Road and uh, lost one of them. And to be fair, Town had given Leeds a bit of a scene to that day. And yeah, they did, scored, yeah. And... Uh, we were getting a lot of um, stick from 
fans was Gary then and it was one of those you got a lot, a lot of fans saying gutless spineless this that and the other no identity which is obviously the phrase that the, the town were using and because then the season they went up wasn't it and he really really lost it and then I was asking him about his relationship with the chairman and he said well, that's none of your business and so well it is for you know x amount of thousand of fans and he closed out but to be fair he apologized afterwards right. always got on with Gary to be fair he's, he's not something he got really close to but it, look it happens doesn't it yeah, so, course it, does, yeah. it happens but he had, a, but, but he had a slow start, didn't he? And yeah, it was oh, it was a terrible to, start. It was yeah. when Tolino was there, who had this reputation of just chasing managers. And yeah. So yeah, I mean, the pressure was probably on him massively. But yeah, uh, yeah. Do you do hear it? What do you have to say about Gary Monk? <laughs> you were his biggest fan the other week. <laughs> I did like Gary Monk. I did. I just liked like, until the exit. He was, he was like a defeat away against Fleetwood in Cup, wanted from being sacked, mm -hmm. and then he suddenly just turned it on, and then oh, he did, yeah, we just. He did very well fucked it off a yeah. bit and <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to that uh, I was driving out of here against the Bristol City game and there was oh in fact you, it was you guys actually on BBC Radio were saying one of the Bristol City reporters got yeah, the mic knocked yeah. out of his hand by uh, Johnson yeah like wow um, yeah, Lee, yeah apparently the, the lad that was doing it um, and Lee John, he was absolutely fuming that they'd lost he thought they were better it was a little bit I felt a bit I hadn't really seen the same game. Yeah, <laughs> delusional. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, the Dean Smiths about him. Yeah, yeah it was. A, yeah, so he's gone out and then he he'd given the um, reporter sort of like one of those sort of yeah, we're all right then, big smack on the back, and it looked like a proper like you know overdone it sort of thing. So um, yeah, so it got mentioned when he came. I think the guy was a bit shook up by it, but hey, you know, look, it's really tough. For them. It's, within half an hour at the end of a game, you've had a result go against you. And you've got to come out and either justify or or whatever, and and it must be really really tough. So, mm. um, so you're sort of wary of that as well. But uh, no, he's, he's quite far his late. And it, it was dad really. His dad used to run soccer schools years ago. Gary, who's a really really mild guy, and obviously he's, he's worked in a lot of club Bristol City, Yeovil, hasn't he? And what have you? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, but I think his yeah his lad seems to be a bit bit more bit fiery than his, uh, than his dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but hey, you know. You could always go the Thomas Christian's route, just ask the club. Uh, so let's talk about your tactics. Yeah. Ask the club. Yeah. Yeah. Are we signing anybody? Ask the club. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> it was terrible when it came to team. Anybody <laughs> else would tell you his team, basically. Thomas would just could tell you the complete opposite. If people were injured, you know, nice guy, but oh, wow. When it came to teenies, wouldn't couldn't lie straight in bed. Yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. We uh, we were at Millwall, weren't we? Of the year we watched Millwall on the gantry. In fact, we came up and saw yeah. you actually before the game, and we were we were still on the pitch at the side of the Millwall fans were dishing the pelters out like <laughs> no tomorrow to everybody, and we were laughing, weren't we, about Christensen? Christensen was coming up to do an interview with you, and he was quickly being hightailed by one of the club staff who were obviously <laughs> rabbiting in his ear about what he couldn't what he couldn't say kind of thing after, but it was quite comical. <coughs> Excuse me, going back over to Facebook then. Um, Ben James, this is the best chance in years to get out of this league. Get this window right, and we get promoted. Get it wrong, and it could be years before we fire. Sorry, hold on. Before we find ourselves in this position again, gotta grab this opportunity. Would you agree with that, Popey? Because I, I've, I could probably screenshot that and take it yeah. back to the monk time when we was in the playoffs, and then yeah. we didn't get in the playoffs, and you know that exact statement again if we don't do something in this window we're definitely not going to get promoted and in that time we didn't but do you feel like yeah. that or well you, look you've got to agree it's the best chance ever I mean then this time what those few years ago you think thinking nailed on for the playoffs at least um, under Gary Monk you know, and then what was it Barrow and Pedratha came in on the on the final day um, and there was a statement team put out obviously against uh, against uh, Sutton wasn't it in the mm. FA Cup so this time I, I feel obviously in a better position because we're in the top in the top two. Yes, I do feel that it's a cracking chance to go out and for the sake of look, I'm not taking small money, but you know for the for the millions it requires. But two really key signings could make a massive difference here, if not just to freshen things up. So much as I respect how Marcelo's gone about it, and if he doesn't want that to happen, then then fine. But Personally, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see it, and I'd hate it to get to mid Feb March where people go, "Told you so," it yeah. hasn't happened back mm. in January. Oh which, and I know that's been the history of things here. Mm. It all lies with and Andre Rogers at the end of the day, doesn't it? I suppose is look, lots been said about his business with Eleven Sports, and that, you know, and he's got that side of things. What are his pockets when it comes to Leeds? Has he got enough? Or has he got inv other investors that are the Forty Nine ers going to step up and do do any more? What's going to happen there? Have they? Th not just the desire because obviously he wants to get in the Premier League but is there enough 
in terms of the depth of the pockets just to keep Leeds sort of if you like say mid championship for lord knows how many more years or are they prepared to go and chuck that 10 20 million it might take now just to not even guarantee it but maybe give a better chance better fighting chance see. yeah but then again you're thinking they've, they've, you can say they've overperformed but the resources that have been put into this season you know and they are still considerable you know I, I, I won't i won't disagree but just getting rid of all those players at the beginning of the season and paying them off or trying to get them half loaned out or, or whatever or doing deals that's expensive that mm. is um, then you know that you, you can't not ignore that either so so there has still been I don't know, on top of the Vieira you know sale which was disappointing I have to say um, but with Bamford coming in you might say it's all evened out but it's a still an expensive club to run so at the moment I'm thinking position says everything they've done all right maybe there is just enough in the tank and I won't be sort of crying into the beer come <laughs> I can't face it oh, honestly. Honestly. But yeah I mean from now you think it's there's to blow that's yeah. the thing yeah, yeah, and, true, yeah. and we've never been in that position I mean 05, 06 my first season doing Leeds um, and at best they were third weren't they like chasing Reading chasing Sheffield United this year they're the best team when it comes to consistently um, it, not only in style but the best thing because of the top of the table so far yeah, so I think it's theirs to blow here the big thing for me as well is that as Leeds fans we're, we're, we're good at sticking in a little bubble and going we're a good side we're a good mm. side we're a good side but now we're starting getting other 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 journalists other pundits nationally mm. who's turning around and saying do you know something Le- Leeds and Norwich are probably the best two sides in the mm. league at the moment because you know, some of your big teams. Who, we're just trying to wind no, us up. So we're not allowed to talk about them on this radio. So <coughs> everyone talk, listens show. to it. Well, we will do in a minute anyway. We'll talk about them for a different reason altogether. But uh, moving it on slightly, because we have gone around a little bit in circles on transfers. If you want a bit more transfer tittle tattle, though, if you nip over to All Leeds TV on YouTube, they're doing a, a Leeds United transfer special tonight after our show. So if you nip over to YouTube Live, you can watch it. I've heard they're going to announce a player. No, they are really. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the problems you caused when Angus Kinnear were here and he kept butting into it? Yeah, when I stopped him telling us all the players we were going to sign. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so moving on slightly today, we have actually seen uh, Connor Shaughnessy, actually it was yesterday, join Hearts on the, for the remainder of the season. Paddy O'Connor's come back from Blackpool and then gone to Bradford. Very unlucky man, isn't he? Comes back from Blackpool. <laughs> Blackpool goes, Congratulations, Paddy. Welcome back to Leeds. Uh, you're off to Bradford. You are Bradford <laughs> from Blackpool. Just where would you rather be, Bradford or Blackpool? Live in Bradford. Bradford at Yorkshire. Yeah. Do you think you yeah. could live in Leeds and sort of? I work in Bradford, and I have to say, I'd probably rather be in Blackpool. <laughs> Ray, I have one lasting memory of Blackpool. Blackpool's the only place you can go clubbing at five o'clock in the afternoon. But I'll, 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 disappear, <laughs> I'll disappear on this tangent for one second, and I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, before my missus had my first son, because uh, I've only got one son, uh, Judd, <laughs> we went to Blackpool. One of them yeah. things of right, we're going to end up with this this little thing that's going to ruin his life for the next however long. We're going to go to Blackpool and going to enjoy yourself. So we booked ourselves into this hotel, which will remain nameless because don't want a court case. Uh, and we'd seen the picture and it was like, oh, it's great. Yeah. Did it have a sex dungeon? No, it had no sex dungeon. I went to one that had a sex dungeon. <laughs> right. Let's keep on this tangent, Ben. Uh, so we go to this hotel and l- needless to say, uh, TripAdvisor uh, was ripping us off. It looked nothing like the pictures. Uh, it was a single bed at best. Uh, a lot of the wallpaper were hanging off. Bear in mind, my missus was like eight and a half months pregnant at this point. Uh, it'd been heavy snow. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, it was an utter disaster. And to compound the matter, uh, we were walking back from the front. It was even with kids with like flashy ones and that hitting you and, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> missus is massive because she's pregnant. So we decided to cut down the back streets. Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Honestly, I thought I was going to die. I thought, right, this is going to make a right story of this. Man and pregnant wife die in Blackpool tragedy. So, that's the last time I've ever been to Brad, uh, Blackpool. Uh, so, enjoy Bradford party. Anyway, uh, on that co- tangent. And then, obviously, Louis Coyle has extended his loan at Fleetwood. We've already discussed yeah. that a little bit earlier on. Uh, so, moving on to Friday then. What's now been billed as a massive, massive game against Derby County. In Frank the Lampard's dad account. Frank, sorry, yeah. I forgot to prerequisite it with Frank Lampard's dad account. Um, in the grand scheme of things, is it such a massive game, Popey, as is being made out? If we don't get a positive result out of it, is it so damaging? In the grand scheme of things, I'd like to see Paulie Connor back at Leeds. I think he's a good yeah, player. That is a good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to rejuvenate the Bradford as well, so it ain't that bad. Big get, yeah, it is, because they've lost three on the bounce, whatever you say, three on the bounce. Got to, got to stop that. Um, and you need to send a message out uh, this weekend. To say Leeds are back, and I think that's why, you know, hopefully you've got Janssen, Cooper, Hernandez, Roof all back and available. So um, yeah, it is big game. I say that every week, but 
no, it is because the, they've got to come out with a. For me, they've got to come out with a victory on yeah. this one on Friday night. Is it bigger because Norwich play West Brom as well? Yeah, yeah that is a massive. Yeah, yeah. You think as well we. We did derby over, didn't we, at the start of the season? So they're going to come wanting yeah. to beat us. They're going to really want to beat us. Let's believe Harry Wilson's injured. Is that? Yeah, I is think he is. He's a, a doubt. He's a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Which is mm. good. He's got some right goals. Yeah. I was going to say, we're not very good from dead balls. And they, no. Yeah. Exactly. And he just thunder bastards them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we expect to see Forshaw in the holding role? Don't speak, Ben. Shush. I really Shush. like Adam Forshaw. <laughs> oh, shit. You didn't run Ben's going to go. Ben's shaving. Um, well, they're a fan of sports Liverpool, like, but what? You know, it's disappointing <laughs> when he was at Everton, like, but um, so uh, I, I really like, and I think I think it, it's not dissimilar to how some people look at Calvin Phillips in the past. That he does an awful lot of stuff that, that people don't really register. Yes, lately there's been some calamitous stuff in football terms on the pitch where he's dropped things short. But I actually thought he was one of the better players on Saturday and Sunday at QPR because. Um, yeah, he had the captaincy, but he had a lot of young lads to sort of pull through, and he, you know, he kept Leeds going where they couldn't. It wasn't a great game, I get that, but yeah. I don't think it was as bad a performance as people suggest. And I think he's, he's just like he gets it. I think he's always got it from the beginning since arriving. So I think he's, I think you'll see him. I, I just do not see him not playing. Yeah, yeah. Just going to Derby, Frank Lampard's Derby County. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about this today, the, the scene, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, I build it up to Derby County are a good side, Derby County are a good side, and I had a little look through their results that season went on this season, don't go on whoscored.com because it's shit. Um, <laughs> but I, I went through and, and realistically, if, if, we, if we look from. away from the Jack Marriott, Harry Wilson, um, Mason Mount, and um, what was the other lad? Tom Lawrence. Tom Lawrence yeah. there. I look at their back line and, and Richard Keogh Keogh is yeah. awful. fills me with joy every time I see him play because I think mm. he's, he's, he's below standard for what he gets touted out at. I mean, do we have that much to worry about about Derby? They're obviously, they are quite potent going forward, but then again, we've seen them looking extremely weak at back and, and a bit like a soft <laughs> underbelly if their attacking line's not playing, if that makes sense. I think Richard Keogh and Co, they'll be flanching a few set pieces, won't they? Well, yeah, true. Yeah. It, so... Um, no, if Leeds get anything, if Leeds get anything like defensively, right, and allow that, you know, attacking sort of quote to, to, to sort of get flying, then they should be fine. Yeah. That because you know, I still think they're creating, you know, enough enough chances to win games. I really do. Um, so I'm not overly concerned at this stage. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not. I, I will be concerned if those two players, Janssen and Cooper, start and they concede from set piece. That's when I'll I'll be concerned. Bit a bit but, worried. Yeah. You know, but look, Derby what sitting in the last place for the playoffs at the moment, aren't they? So, yeah. and they they've, they've done all right. Not you know, so um, I'm not overly concerned, but but yeah, I think there's a bit of tension, but the tension because of where they are on the table. And um, mm, the thing I think is, I don't think Derby can come and do what other teams have done, where they sit behind ball and no. look to break. Mm. They're, they're going to have to come and try and play as his own game. And I think if they want to trade blows with, I think there's there's only one team that will come out on top. That's my personal thought on mm. that. I think mm -hmm. the game will suit us more. Than yeah. some previous games we've had, I think because they'll have to come and attack us, even though they're coming to Ellen Road and, and it'll be absolutely rocking here on Friday night as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Pretty much yeah. nearly sold out. So, uh, yeah. There were a few yeah. tickets so, left this morning. I think I think, I think that makes out for an open game, which I think suits us. And I th I'd, I'd like to think as well, after a, a reasonably poor run of form recently, despite not playing particularly too badly, mm -hmm. that some of the players will have real tails in, you know tail between legs and be thinking right we're going to put this put this straight and yeah. and start showing why we're top of the league and I think if you listen to some of Frank Lampard's comments that will undoubtedly be coming in the next couple of days you could just play that in dressing room before kick off the game and that should be enough to because um, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine Bielsa is the type of person who gives too much away before the game anyway I, I kind of get the feeling he sets it up all week and then just expects it to happen kind of thing I, mm -hmm. I don't know I wonder I mean, I don't know, Derby, what, they're four points clear of Forest, aren't they, at the moment? So yeah. they're not going to be budged out of, out of that position. So pressure's on that. I mean, you, there's some enormous pressure on teams below Leeds when you think about it. Nobody expects Leeds to be where they are. They are where they are. But you look at Stoke, got rid of the manager. Mm. You know, Villa, you know, they need to, you know, if they're going to do it, they're going to have to start really motoring. You know, Derby being in and around Forest has spent boatloads of money. Far more pressure on those teams than there is on Leeds, I would say. Pressure with it's because we're it's because it's Leeds, isn't it? And, yeah. and we now expect the name, but in the grand scheme of this season, no way did anybody really expect Leeds to be where they are. No. But some of those teams are struggling badly. I mean, Borough as well. I mean, Pulis, they're all for 
Get rid of him, yeah. Karanka, mm. that, the Leeds game, everybody was saying, much as the fans seemed to quite like him, that they, all the talk from the lads at BBC Nottingham was that they'd been expected since Boxing Day that he might be going. Um, so, but the one club that really, that's, that you can't really say that, Villa have changed their manager. So, yeah, um, massive pressure. Shouldn't forget that, massive pressure on all the sides that are, that are coming to Leeds. Definitely. Yeah, just uh, last tip onto Facebook because we need to run this on a little bit. Uh, a lot of people asking about Lewis Baker being sent back. We already discussed it with Pope. He's not aware of anything and he'd be surprised oh, if it was yeah. from Leeds. So last yeah. tomorrow though, so we'll find out about that tomorrow. Um, a few people mentioned about the set pieces, yeah. Uh, have you anything, heard anything about how long potentially Douglas might be out? We talked about that in terms of... And obviously tomorrow's the presser. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine he'll tell us tomorrow if he's going to be missing this, this weekend, but I, I think you're right. I mean, you're talking about the translation when he said will be out without him a while but then said look he made it through his the Nottingham game with a muscle injury it didn't sound too bad so um, but no nobody's come back to us and said oh he's definitely going to be out for the next two or three weeks or right. anything like that sometimes sometimes it gives you a full rundown um, right. we did that early on this season but no at this stage not sure well good news there. Mm. right then so we'll, we'll move it on a little bit and we'll go with a bit of prediction time because uh, there's a few predictions starting to creep in on there anyway so we'll go for this Raggy's predictor so over to the main man Chris Miles I mean Raggy uh, for a bit of <laughs> sorry mate I couldn't help myself no need, I just no saw need. yourself and I just I couldn't help it so a bit of prediction time so Poppy just to put you in the picture yeah. I'm sure you do listen every week but if you don't <laughs> uh, we have a go at badly predicting every result and you get a point for uh, getting it right or you get three points and you get a point for just getting exact score. I'll leave it All to right. Raggy. Right. Um, yeah, so the QPR game. Um, Ryan Wilson, who was our Mickey Peak uh, guest of the week, uh, actually lost his place because he got it bang on. So we gave it to <laughs> Chud instead because he went 2-1 uh, lead. So he didn't pick up a point for the guest. Um, old Ben, you went 1-0 QPR, so you got a point. Uh, both Gaz and Young Ben uh, stuck their loyalties with Leeds and didn't get a point because they went for Leeds victories. I went 2-1 QPR, so I got three. So that leaves guests still out in the lead on 32. Um, me now on 25. Young Ben 24. Old Ben 23. And Gaz is the uh, new loser on 22. Oh, what? <laughs> but as, uh, as Ben has said all Man season, it's been Man for not sprint. So. <laughs> so obviously moving on to Friday night's game, uh, Leeds Derby. Um, what we all thinking in terms of uh, results wise? And um, we'll start with our guest. Adam. I'm thinking 2-2, two, two, but I'm going to go 2-1 Leeds. 2-1 Leeds. Mm. I like it. I like it. Ben. Uh, 3-1 Leeds. Just because I didn't want to give the same predictions. <laughs> ben. 2-1 Leeds. 2-1. I can see Derby scoring, but I think we all see this is what worries me at the minute I didn't know whether to go 3 or 2 I desperately want to go 2 in the leads but as the current run of form <laughs> I, I, I struggle to see a clean sheet coming so I, I wish I go for it well I'm going 2 in the leads so that might change I, I'm mind. going 2-1 leads you're going 2 just one. because Popey hasn't chance that uh, they're going to win it again so let's <laughs> <laughs> stick with that yeah well I'll go 2-0 then 2-0 no. so um, yeah well, we'll see how uh, we'll see how they go yeah a few people uh, giving their results uh, Lee Cox he's gone 2-0 Cooper back with a clean sheet Matt Taylor's gone three in the leads, and Ian Martin's gone. Sorry, Ian Martin Stevens has gone two in the leads. Simon Fox has gone three one. We fried it. Click with a thunder bastard. Yeah, click. Yes, it'd be good. Yeah, it would be nice just to, I think, get, get back, get it off his back as well, because yeah. it does look like he's since the carrying song. the burden around since the songs appeared as well. Because he had a couple of chances at all where he could have pulled trigger, and he opted not to. Mm. The one, I think, there were one particular one in front of us. But um, Paul Williamson makes a great. Uh, Williams, sorry, makes a great point. Just stop the conceding of early goals. Hmm? Every every game, we're yeah, yeah. On every game. I mean, and obviously that that whole stat about Leeds coming back better than anybody else from being behind is now getting reversed seriously, isn't it? Mm. I mean, what was it the other day? Was it prior to the last game? I think twelve shots on target, ten had been had gone in, hadn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prior to, which is mm. yeah, that's worrying. It's a lot. It's a it's a lot to come back from. It is, and uh, yeah, if they can do that. Then yeah, you'd fancy them, wouldn't you? Certainly in the latter stages of any game, even if it's tight. Yeah, definitely. Fingers For crossed. Forest, the <laughs> Forest game was the first time we dropped any points after being in a winning position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So that just goes to show if we do, other than that Forest game, if we've edged ahead, mm -hmm. we've kept we've yeah. kept it. We haven't even conceded, you know, equalisers. We or, or if we have, we've gone out, and, mm. gone out and, and won the game. We've won every other game. Luke Hopkinson's chirped up and put. Don't be surprised though if we get five. <laughs> well, I've said all season we're going to give somebody a slap to at some point Ooh, that may nice, be that I'm not sure but can you imagine the statement if we did slap Derby mm. well if you, we, we go into it you've had Klitsch has had a rest Douglas might have been injured but we still had a bit of a rest Roof. Pontus has had a rest Roof's had a rest Pablo's had a rest it sort of leads itself to they're all going to be chomping at the bit for this yeah definitely I'd hope so. A few I, people, I hope I've not jinxed it then. There's a few people asking about Bamford and Izzy Brown and people like that, but obviously you'll find a bit more out in press, I would imagine. Brown, tomorrow. we've been told, is not till mid Feb. Right. That's what he told us. He's fit, but won't be ready to play till, till mid Feb. Bamford, yeah, he's not put any sort of. Normally he puts like two weeks, three weeks, whatever, but all we were told he was behind Roberts. Um, his dad was at Nottingham Forest apparently the other week um, chatting to uh, Steve Hodge, and I think he said, look, it's definitely not as bad as before. But he wasn't saying when it was going to be. So, right. um, yeah, look, wasn't involved on on Monday, last night, was he? So no. you're thinking that it won't be it won't be Friday, surely. Tell you what, Roberts has impressed me. Last I was impressed. Yeah, games. when he came on against Hull, Hull he made a yeah. difference. Yeah, and when he, he did when he played against QPR, if if he scores that one that comes off oh. the double post in the first yeah. couple of minutes, yeah. a different game altogether. Absolutely. But yeah, I was I was impressed with him when he's come on recently. I mean, in that ten role. Mm. Um, but then when we've seen him played out wide, I've not I've been less impressed with him. So mm. I think I think he's but better. It was early on in the season, the wasn't it? He? he didn't yeah. he didn't look a wide player at all. No, but I mean, he did well when he led the line when he had to when he, mm. he was the only fit striker. I think the thing is as well with him, we tend to forget he's only nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's the bit in it. You know, we got him from West Brom and we played we paid whatever x amount of millions for him. We tend to forget that. He's not a seasoned lad. He's, he's no. still coming through. He's still a youngster essentially. So I think yeah. there's still a lot to come from him. Yeah. He's had his Wales call-ups, hasn't he? He's played. He's scored three what goals this season. As you say, unlucky not to have added to that the weekend. And yeah. has had you know pretty mega injury mm. since arriving at Leeds too. So it's not been plain sailing for him. But in all, he's got. If his season stopped now, you got to say it's been a successful one for him. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Right, moving on to our next section. Shit out of the week. <laughs> We've revamped the shit out of the week for 2019, where we <laughs> give. Uh, one person, or potentially a group of people, as we did previously, <laughs> for like all the talks, but um, an, an award for being shit houses generally. So I was struggling this week, but I came up with two names: Ed Woodward for sacking Mourinho. That was uh, my first thought process, and uh, serial winner, uh, the Moose of Talksport again, because. Having got slagged by a lot of Leeds fans before, he's then took another chunk out of us this week by asking where we are in the fourth round of their FA Cup. He also said that it was a disgrace that we played a weekend team against QPR as well. That appears to be the talk spot rhetoric of the week if they had a similar award to us because a lot of them have been saying that. Adrian Durham's come out and said that yeah, Klopp disrespe <laughs> disrespected it uh, and that we disrespected it as well by playing a load under 23s. Don't you have to take it all into context though? Like, you look at Leeds and every I think most Leeds fans are happy with the team we put out because of the games that we played over Christmas and how they went into extra time and when mm -hmm. we came back. Um, the injuries we've had, I mean, you could see in them games at times that Klitsch, even probably for the last month, Klitsch maybe needed just a game out just to, to sit out. We, we discussed Douglas earlier. I said he looked like he had lead in his boots, so it gives him a rest there. And I think every decision that Bielsa's has made for QPR has a good reason behind it. There's also a wider context for me, um, <clears throat> and there's an irony point as well, that TalkSport are now slagging for people not respecting their fake cup, but the people behind their fake cup have sold it to the highest bidder for so mm. long that they've devalued it anyway, so the, you can't even get it on yeah. telly. It's it on BT Sport, and, yeah. and, and then we have a five o'clock FA Cup final, which yeah. is against any form of... Well, just look at this round. How many games at 12.30 on a Saturday? Well, How many, spread over four spread days. Spread yeah. over it, all because it of overseas telly. On Saturday afternoon at three, weren't there? Ten times. Yes. That was it, which is... Which is ridiculous. Yeah. So and also, I think... Do you know what? I, I honestly think it is the head coach is right to pick who they yeah. think. Because at the end of the day, the fans will either get them out or the owner will get them out because results will, will go against them. I, I think you... That's... When you turn up, I don't know, it might be stretching it, but when you pay your... You tick it in. You think you actually, especially your season ticket. You're actually saying, "No, I trust what's going on here," to for the people to make the right decisions most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, away from all the love for the club and all that sort of thing. You actually sort of saying, "Yeah, we trust this guy to do it." And he, and you're right. He gave explanation from one to eleven as to why he'd done it. 
two days before. <laughs> yeah, two days before, which was, yeah. And I don't Maverick. think it changed. I don't think it, 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 that changed anything uh, in any way. But I think he was right. I think it was good that he did that because he explained to fans. And I don't, I haven't seen any dissent from anybody saying, oh, no, know, I've this not. Is, I, not in any, to any major, a, major extent. And also, and I, I felt he was genuine about the cup as well. I think he thought, yeah, I want to win this. But I can do it with these players, and I'm going to have to do it with some of these players because mm. some are missing or suspended or what have you. So I was I was fine with it. Yeah. I did not feel in any way it was anything near what we've seen, you know, Sutton, oh, or whatever, yeah, yeah. anything like that. No. No, not even not even just you know casting off the game at all. It wasn't like that at all. He wanted to win that mm. definitely. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think we could. I've, give... got, I've got another nominee. Go on. Oh, um, Neil Warner. Just for having the temerity of calling someone else classless. Yeah. Unbelievable with the Nathaniel Clark. Well, that was deflection tactics, wasn't it? Yeah. That was, just, after losing to Jude, what, his whole career? Yeah, <laughs> it was, that was classic Warnock, that was, to yeah. go on about the, the Nathaniel Klein thing when, when his team had lost at Gillingham. He also, right. he also tipped in about Tammy Abraham this week as well. Really? He also tipped in saying Tammy Abraham had agreed to go to Cardiff in summer, but then yeah. turned up at Villa. So it's, it's just typical Warnock, isn't it? Yeah. So he, could, he could get it every week. So ooh, yeah. So <laughs> ooh, we, we, also we've got to put Daniel Ayala in there as well because yeah, he, he goes in there every week. week. Yeah, yeah, just for being him. Yeah, uh, so uh, do we have a general consensus? Who should win it? Ben? Um, I don't know. Oh god. Raggy? I'm going Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock. Oh well, yeah. Moose. <laughs> Moose. Uh, you, you feel free to not answer Popey, but you can chuck one out there. I ain't kind of, but it's really aggravated me this week. Shut <laughs> 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 at work. Uh, yeah. Uh, who forgot? No, we just really. Gone on the skin this week. No, I'd say yeah. The the FA for flogging their so-called mm. well showpiece cup anyway. Mm. They have, haven't they? they? Lifting their skirts. Uh, essentially, whoever, that's all they've done. And it's the same with everything now. The yeah. Premier League has become come so cash rich that any club who's at risk of getting dumped out of it are terrified of getting dumped out of it so they feel the weakened side so they've got a stronger side for the league any team that's got a chance of winning it feel the weakened side because they desperately want to win it to stay in the Champions League because that also brings some money same in the Championship anybody who's got half a chance of going up desperately want the money that's in the Premier League it's been sold to blooming BT and anybody else who wants to buy it I think it about didn't they say something like 37 countries have bought a stream to the FA Cup Leeds was shown in 65 countries yeah mine didn't have any commentary on which was a bit weird (laughs) My yeah. stream didn't have any comments yeah. which was a bit strange. And it meant you had to go down to London on a Sunday, which is a school night, Ben. Yeah, yeah that was shit. How yeah. did you teach Phil Monday morning? Mum, please. Hey, first day back <laughs> at school as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Bags under eyes. Didn't like it. Forgot pencil case. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Pencil. Is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So let's give it FA. Just going back to my tweet in 2014, how old were you then? 2014? What year are you now? 2015? No, 2019 now, Ben. 2019. He's been a proper long day. He's been a proper long day. Uh, I had a 2014. Well, I'm 21 now, so work it out. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Y
because I know I remember I remember working just down the road from here at the Builders Merchants years ago when Leeds won the title, and I remember there was a guy, lad old Tony worked in the yard, and he said the best days, you know, he said great won the title and all that, eight nine nine it was the best season. The going up was the best season. It was fantastic. It was even better than when he looks back at the memories. That year was better than winning the the old first division, if you like. Wow, yeah. Um and so I think we should enjoy this because mm. if he does it it is a miracle in its own right the way he's doing it so I just so want it to happen because it's um, obviously for the city and all the fans and everything but the fact that he's had the cojones to do it this way and keep doing it this way it'll be incredible that'll make it even better one of the great stories um, and, and to finish off what about your beloved Everton your second love behind Leeds United obviously yes yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> sort of think sort of think they're going in the right direction with Marco Silva the ground move uh, I think it's needed I love the old the old lady but um, yeah it's uh, going in the right direction yeah I think it was such a setback Koeman spent a fortune you know loads of players the same ill fans hate Allardyce objectively a lot of other head coaches think right they did a good job got them to eight but I think they're going in the right direction mm. with Silver, and there is some attractive stuff to watch. Speak to the lads that go all the time, the family and that. So, yeah, um, be all right. But can't beat the top side, it's mm. and that's that's the issue. Just cannot beat the top side. So, six at best, isn't it? So something's going to have to change to get there. Now they've made a statement today, aren't they, that they're going to win the Premier League in the new stadium. So something has to change now. Big change. That's a big change. Do you know what? I'd love them just to win the League Cup. They've never won it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, if you could just get a bit, bit of silverware, then, but yeah, start challenging for, be genuine sort of fifth, sixth contenders, and then maybe, maybe then you can push on. But I think I'm pleased overall. But look, don't get to see them. So you don't get, a bit, you can't comment as shrewdly as you can on, on say Leeds, mm. you, you see all the time. But I tell you what, they all want them back. They all want Leeds back. Yeah, oh, I've seen a few oh, Premier League fans they coming do. out. Right? They might. Not, I mean, man, you were singing Leeds the other day, weren't they? In the cup, you could hear it, couldn't you? Yeah. Mm, um, they all sing about mm. it. yeah. So they all want it back. They'll miss the day out and uh, and the sort of edge that, that, that the, yeah, the game yeah. brings. You know. So yeah, and it would make a massive difference to the Premier League. It would make them. I don't know if people can hear that on Facebook. <laughs> they can, they can. Yeah. Well, let's explain what it is yeah. in a minute. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would make such a massive difference to the Premier League, I think, in, in away days and all that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Having, having Leeds back would be be great. Just give me one season in the Premier League with the Wheeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. It would be yeah. good to be fair. Yeah. So yeah, that does bring us to the end of episode thirty nine. A massive thanks for Popey for coming in. Thank you. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, as you can probably hear in the background, the Fat Chance podcast guys are warming up. I think that will probably Mickey and some I Octave uh, <laughs> singing something. So that's our definite cue to leg it before they come and uh, take over the desk. So a massive thanks everybody for listening. Don't forget to get involved in the competition if you want. Uh, if you want to leave us a shit review, do, but you're not going to win the ticket. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. Um, and tune in next week where we're joined by Dan Hearn, uh, Leeds United ladies manager, is going to come in and talk to us about the ladies game up at Leeds at the moment and nice. uh, coming back into the club and stuff like that. So that'll be good. And then we've got some other guests lined up as well. I've been busy at New Year. I've been, um, been wooing out. people. Not really, it's been begging, really. Just harassing. Will you come on my show, please? Come on that show, please. Anyway, that brings us to an end. So again, massive thanks to Popey. And uh, here's to three points on Friday. Hopefully. 2-1. Sithy. Sithy. I'll sithy. The hero is Carl Shut, 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 sh